Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us to celebrate this Velada Ostosiana Center on Celebrating Women's History Month. My name is Felix Sanchez, Alumni Relations Manager at the Division of Institutional Advancement, and I'm also a proud Hostos Community College alum from the class of 2002. Today's presentation, Preparing for the Real World, is part of an event series sponsored by the Office of the President, and we welcome this time alumna and manager of multicultural affairs at the New York Yankees organization, Ms. Lina Cruz, for a one-on-one -on -one conversation with alumna and hostos development manager, Ms. Ida Samendez, on what it means to be part of the bronze community and striving toward her dreams, from hostos to the New York Yankees. Please be aware that this event is being recorded and that closed captioning is available on the screen. And now it is my pleasure to introduce our interim president, Dr. Daisy Coco de Filippis. Madam President. Muy buenas tardes. Good afternoon. How lovely, lovely it is. Idelsa, I remember from my time as a provost here and the Serrano Scholars Program. So proud of her and how she has become this beloved student helper and the also spirit of generosity and kindness lives in her work. I really was so, so happy to find her here doing well. And Lena Cruz, I met uh, when I met with management uh, from, from, from the Yankees and I was so impressed with her. And, and the thought that there she was, this beautiful young woman who was uh, begun her career with us and I immediately thought, wouldn't it be wonderful to have Idelsa and Lina, these two beautiful alumni, uh, uh, sort of exchange ideas. I'm so thrilled also to see with us Isabel Neira, who is uh, the secretary of the SGA Senate and who is soon to be an alumna herself uh, in another uh, semester, I believe. So happy to see Isabel who has been a part of a lot of, of our veladas and Senor Sanchez, Feli Sanchez. Wow, what enthusiastic representation you, you give of, of, of our work. So this is a, about me just being a mother hen and being proud to say that there are these young people that in some way also, you know, help uh, uh, begin uh, their transformation into these wonderful professional women who are caring and who are supportive precisely of many, many, many of the aspects of the Ostos mission. So, adelante. I want to hear this. I want to also hear, right? What inspired you about Ostos? Not at some point, I have to say that. What inspired you about Ostos? What was the most useful uh, thing uh, you picked up? And why are you doing what you're doing now? I think I know that answer. But at any rate, thank you. Mil gracias. Bendiciones por todo. Siempre. Thank you, Madam President, for your words. At this point, I would like to introduce the Secretary and Senator of our student government organization, Ms. Isabel Neira Sanchez. Buenas tardes a todos. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, President Daisy for inviting me to be here today. I am so very proud to be here representing all the students of Hostos Community College. As a member of Hostos Student Government and Leadership Academy, I can say Hostos is home to all of us all. I still remember how students walk into the college and see their country's flag hanging in the C building. They knew by seeing those flags that their unique culture was being embraced by the college. Today, we celebrate Women's History Month with two wonderful ladies who exemplify these distinctions, Lina Cruz, Idelsa Mendez, and one wonderful gentleman, Felix Sanchez. All of these individuals are alumni of Hostos Community College. And where else ask a student like me? We are very happy because today, Lina will tell us how to be prepared for the real world. As we learn about it, 
we can share with other students about this great and helpful information because we need it. As I soon I expect to graduate myself and will become an alumni too. I look forward to a, a journey that will lead me on the path such as Lina. Welcome to Hostos. We are very glad that you, I ha that you have joined us for this celebration and are teaching us how to be prepared for the real life. On behalf of the entire SGA team, I want to say thank you so much to everyone for being here today for this very and special event. Thank you, Ms. Sanchez. We will now start our event. During the conversation, we encourage you to please submit your questions in the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen throughout the event, as they will be answered at the end. Ms. Lina Cruz is the New York Yankees Manager of Multicultural Affairs. She serves as the organization's in-house resource on all Latino multicultural affairs. Ms. Cruz also serves as one of the board members for the New York Yankees Foundation which provides assistance for organizations located in the Bronx and its surrounding areas. In her role as manager of multicultural affairs, Ms. Cruz supports the Yankees in their ongoing commitment to being a productive member of the community. Additionally, Ms. Cruz is the point person for the Yankees Spanish language radio broadcast and social media sites, the latter of which have experienced more than a 20% growth since 2016. A native of Colombia and resident of New York City, Ms. Cruz has been recognized by diverse Latino organizations for her work in the community and sports. Ms. Cruz is also proud to be part of the Hostos and CUNY family. She graduated with an associate's degree in business management from Hostos Community College in 2011. She holds a bachelor's degree in public affairs and psychology from Baruch College, a certificate in translation and interpretation from Hunter College, and a certificate in sports industry essentials from Columbia University, and is currently enrolled in the corporate communication master's, master's program at Baruch College. In addition to her accomplishments in the sports industry, Ms. Cruz is the founder of Top Multicultural, a company that provides marketing services as well as the host of Lini Talks, a podcast that aims to empower, educate, and inspire others. She is a woman of many hats that believes in the power of hard work and dedication. Before establishing her life in New York City, three-time CUNY alumna Idelsa Mendez traveled back and forth between the Dominican Republic and New York for many years until she enrolled at Hostos to learn English. After completing an Associate of Arts and Sciences degree at Hostos in 2006, she went on to earn a bachelor's degree in sociology from Lehman College and a master's degree in public administration from John Jay College. She honed her professional skills at the career services offices at the hostels, at hostels where she worked from 2009 to 2015. Her cheerful demeanor and innate talent for making people feel comfortable and respected got her a promotion to the Division of Institutional Advancement where she currently serves as development manager. In her current position, Idelsa contributes to organizing and administering general fundraising activities, in addition to three major fundraising events of Hostos, the annual Hostos Scholarship Benefit, annual golf outing, the CUNY Payroll Deduction Campaign, and Giving Tuesday. Idelsa has earned respect for leading campaigns that exceed fundraising goals and recognized by the CUNY Chancellor. Her strong networking skills have proven effective in developing strong relationships with potential donors at all levels, not only within the hostess community, but outside the college as well. Whether she works with institutional advancement, alumni relations, university-wide groups, or community leaders and organizations, Idelsa is always mindful to build relationships that understand that giving to hostels is about leveraging need with benefits for the students hostels serves. In January 2020, Idelsa served as co-chair of the Women's March in New York City. She shares with local community members her expertise in fundraising to assisting young entrepreneurs with the acquisition of additional funding. For Idelsa, education is everything. 
It's so important to be informed, to be educated and aware of the changes in our surroundings. Her work at Hostos and her presence in the Bronx have made a difference. For what promises to be an exciting Veladas Hostosianas conversation, ladies and gentlemen, let's now welcome Ms. Lina Cruz and Ms. Idelsa Mendez. Thank you. Thank you, Phyllis, for this um, beautiful introduction. Thank you, uh, Madam President Daisy Coco de Filippi. Uh, thank you, Lina, for accepting this invitation. Um, Hostel has made a huge difference in my life. It changed my outlook for opportunities out there. Lina and I share the same experience. As we both graduated from hostels, we also came from abroad and learned our first word in English at hostels. Hostels is known being a family, a home away from home for many students like us. Lina. Yes, um, hello everyone, and thank you so much for inviting me uh, here today. It is an honor for me to be with everyone here today, and it means a lot because Hostos was my the first place when I, like Idelsa said, when I came to the United States, I started a Hostos, and Hostos was the second family to me, and it is still today. I keep keep it very close to my heart and all the memories that I made there and all my beginning really in the United States, uh, Hostos was part of that. And I'm really happy to be here today. And I hope my story inspires some of you to, to know that uh, when we work hard and we really dedicate ourselves, we can really go places. And I'm here to also let you know that I'm here to support everyone and to continue opening doors for everyone as well. Thank you, Lina. And we're gonna start our conversation. It's gonna be very informal. Uh, I know we have a few students um, uh, right now watching this velada. And so the first question for you, Lina, is tell us a little bit about your personal, academic, and professional journey, and how the, this journey gets you to where you are today at the Yankees. Well, um, as far as my personal life, as Felix had mentioned, I am originally from Colombia in South America. Very proud. I came to the United States about 12 years ago. When I came here, I only came to learn English. And that was my initial goal to come to the United States to learn English. I was very young. It was after I graduated high school. I, I was a professional athlete in Colombia. Um, I was preparing myself to be in the Olympics. And so I wasn't planning to stay in the United States. Um, I started in the ESL intensive program at Hostess Community College, which was a blessing to me because an extremely like great program. I went from zero to a hundred in a year. Um, and I have to thank my professors then for that. And so that's how my journey started in the New York City and hostels uh, when I didn't know any English. And here I am 12 years later, still in the United States and, you know, like fighting and accomplishing my, my dreams and my goals. As far as academics, uh, like I mentioned, I started um, in the ESL program. Then I said to myself, you know, I, I feel I can do more here. And then I continue. I finished my associates at Hostos. Then I transferred to Baruch College to pursue my bachelor's in public affairs and psychology. And then I, that's through Hostos, I was fortunate enough to be part of the partnership with, between Hostos and the New York Yankees. Um, they developed a partnership to have the first intern to be part of the Department of Latino Affairs at the Yankees. And they needed someone bilingual, someone that knew the Hispanic market. Uh, I applied. I went through like a very long interview process and I was the first um, student from Hostos to be part of that partnership then. And that's how my, my, my career with the Yankees started. Uh, and I have to thank Hostos and the partnership that they had with the Yankees because if it wasn't because of that, that wouldn't have been possible for me. 
Thank you, Nina. That was wonderful. And I remember the whole journey. I was at Career Services when you were in the process of applying for the internship. Um, so my next question is, as a hostess alumna, how do you think hostess can help prepare uh, the students for the real world? Idelsa, can you repeat that again? Sorry. I... No. So yes, so as a hostess alumna, so you know, today we're gonna to talk about how to prepare our students for the real world. So as a hostess alumna, how do you think hostels can help prepare our students for the real world? I can tell you that for me, one of the best things about hostels is the, the family atmosphere that I felt from day one. So when I came here, like as anyone who comes to a country or like different place for the first time, you don't know what to expect. You don't know how people are going to treat you. You don't know uh, what it's going to, to happen or how, how, how things are gonna go for you. In my case, uh, since day one, uh, there was always someone, a hostess to help me. There was always uh, a place to go if I needed help. If the person didn't know, then they will send me to the right place to go. And I think one of the best uh, ways that hostels can continue helping students to succeed is continue leveraging those partnerships with other institutions, with organizations that like me, like someone like me could benefit from that. Because if it wasn't, again, because of that partnership with hostels and the Yankees, I wouldn't be where I am today, being the manager of multicultural affairs for the New York Yankees. And in a way, I am representing uh, hostess and the CUNY family uh, within the Yankees family. Yes, absolutely. So I also wanna ask you, what problem best um, problems in the school best supported you during your time at the college? And if you can also name for some of the faculty or people that you made a hostess that made a difference in your life. Yes. So when I was at hostess, I was very active. I had to say I everything that um, I could participate on, I will be on. I was part of the student government. I was part of like their cheerleading. I was um, always attending like leadership events. I was on uh, like um, speech competitions. I was trying to be as involved and active as I could because I think that's one of the ways that you get information, that you get prepared and that you get your experience and that's part of the student life. Um, so one of the things that I can remember and I appreciate one of them is obviously being part of the student government because that developed my leadership skills and that exposed me not only within the school, but also outside of the school, because we had the opportunity to, to travel, to go to conferences, to meet students from other schools, and to also interact with faculty and have like these conversations that were meaningful and important for the students at the time. Um, as, as far as uh, other um, avenues, the career services. I was part of like various fashion shows. And I think that's when Adelsa and I met um, because I was one of the fashion shows that she was organizing to actually raise money for scholarships at the college. And then, and that was great because I was doing something for the students. I was doing something that I enjoyed and the career services. It wasn't just to, I remember it was not just to fix my resume, but you also had an opportunity to talk to someone about what your goals will be. What um, I remembered also, we had something like dress to impress. And then you guys had like uh, a lot of clothes if you needed to go to an interview, you know, like those kind of like resources are great and I think those are great resources for students to to take advantage of because they are there for for us for students to succeed uh, outside of school yes that was uh, I remember that that was and, and and you know that's one of the messages that I want people to take away today you know when I asked Lena would you like to be one of the models she said yes you know and we took the, the classes and we had a training but she was always um available and willing to learn and participate. And, and I think that's the best thing. That's, the, that's what I call the real college experience. When you take the time and you learn how to balance your college responsibility, but also be able to participate in any extracurricular activity. So I, I always tell people when I had the opportunity to students, 
get involved. I know it's hard, but get involved. And um, Miguel said, just to add to that, because um, I know right now a lot of, I mean, I'm a part-time student at Baruch College now because I'm doing my master's and I have a full-time job and other activities that I do. I know we always complain about like, oh, but we don't have time. I, at, some, at one point when I was a hostess, I think I had three part-time jobs while I was doing all the student government, all the volunteering. It, was, it wasn't easy, but it was worth it. But you see, when you sacrifice, it pays off. It does. And thank you. So my next question Lina, is, how has COVID-19 impacted the work your office has accomplished during the last year? I believe that it hasn't just affected my office, but I think everyone's life. You know, I haven't been at the stadium for about a year, uh, which is, is strange to me to think about it because, you know, I, I'm used to, I was used to go to Yankee Stadium every single day, uh, my long commute, like go there, be there for the game, see all the fans, my coworkers. And life has, has changed in that way, but we have adjusted to that. And I believe that the same has happened to you. And, and you can also share a little bit about your experience in, you know, in education, because now all the education is, is virtual, it is digital, and we don't, we don't see our classmates or our professors anymore in person, but all, everyone sees each other through the screens, and that's how the interactions happen in, in, the, in today's world. So you can also share that, Idelsa. It's, it's, it's a little bit challenging, especially for me. I mean, I'm going to say for me because I, I'm a social butterfly, so I love human interaction. So, you know, interacting with people behind the screen is one of the things that I, you know, there's a lot of things bad about this pandemic, but I feel like, you know, especially our students, they need um, a lot of support. Um, you know, I was one of the students that never took online classes because I like to be in the classroom. So... I feel bad, I feel sad for the students because I know right now um, it's very challenging, you know? You don't have a person. Sometimes writing take, it takes time and energy to write an email. So it's easy just to go and, and, and talk to someone. And yeah, the whole, the whole I think everything has changed. It's, it's very challenging. Um, hopefully we, I feel that we're gonna go back to normal pretty soon. I have hope and um, but yes, uh, I, so my next question is actually related to this. What are your predictions for the post-COVID bronze? For the, well, I think it, more than my prediction, I think it is my wish that uh, not only the Bronx, but as, as a society, we get to, we get to learn from this experience because uh, you know, if things happen for us not to learn from them. And, and just adjust to what, the, what we have now, because this is something that we are going to have to live with for the rest of our lives. So it's, it's a matter of like adjusting as a society and taking that, the lessons that we learned la last year and the, what we are learning today and incorporate that into what we do on everyday lives as, you know, going back to the previous question as to like, you know, life is, is challenging because, you know, we're not interacting with people as much. We're now working remotely, like things are different, but then let's try to take a different look at that. Like, okay, and now if I'm working um, from home, like how can I make that transition a little bit more productive? What other things can I do so I take care of my mental health as well? What are, like now people, um, you know, because we use Zoom every day, maybe people that you wouldn't talk to as much before, now we all jump on a Zoom call, like 50 people and you're all over the world and you get to communicate with them. So I think it's a matter of like adjusting and as, as for the community, as for the Bronx, I, I, my hope is that we continue rising, we continue being a better community and, um, I can tell you from where I am in my job that we worked every day and we're really committed 
uh, because we are part of the Bronx community, we're committed to support our neighbors. We're committed to making our surrounding communities a better place. And that's what we want as an organization. That's what I want as a worker, as a professional, but that's what I want as Lena, who is also part of this community. Um, I see that we have a lot of uh, students, you know, um, in the audience. So I have another question for you, Lena, and this is because the theme of this is how to prepare for the real world. So what best practice do you recommend to host the students to excel in the career of choice? I know you mentioned, you know, get involved, um, but like what would be something that you say, you know, if you had the time, do this? So one of the things, um, I, I think one is do your research into what you really want to do. Uh, when I started, and I remember even when I was um, choosing my career path, like many students or most students, I will say, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. I started liberal arts and then I went to business management, but then I wanted to apply to education and I ended up going to Baruch for public affairs. Um, so explore that, ask questions. Um, find uh, like faculty, like for me, I always approach faculty members. I always approach my professors and they always were like, you know, they always had a good like response to me. They were always open to have a conversations. A lot of like professors have open hours and a lot of students don't take advantage of that. Mm -hmm. I would, I will go and ask questions and, and, even, and not even, not just about the subject, but about the, the, you know, my career path and ask for advice. And, and another thing that I will advise every single student is to be determined and really put the time and the work for what you want to accomplish. Because like you said, Idelsa, if we, do, if we don't put in the work, we're not going to get the results that we want. It's like losing weight. If you don't dedicate yourself and you, you don't, don't stick to your plan, you can't expect to lose X amount of pounds because you didn't really put the work that you were supposed to put in. And also take advantage of the things that and the resources that the college offers. There, there are a lot of programs, there are a lot of scholarships, there are a lot of resources that students have available. And some of them don't even know about it. But we have to be curious to look for those resources, to ask, like, where can I find these? How can I get this? And I'm pretty sure you will find that answer. Thank you, Lena. And um, yes, and I agree with you, you know. I always tell people, don't be afraid to ask questions. Always, you know, identify someone or a few people that can become your mentor, you know, always look for mentorship. Uh, there's so many people out there, especially I can, I can talk about my experience at Hostos. There were so many people that I asked for help and everyone said yes to me, you know, and, and, and I always tell people, if you don't ask, you don't know. So, um, and that's, that's why mentorship and look for help, get involved. Um, even, even though if it's hard to balance your work responsibility, volunteer, whatever is possible to get you involved into the next level, because also recommendation letters are important. You know, I know a lot of students that they need recommendation letters, but they can get it because they don't have a relationship established with a professor. So we are so proud of you. Um, you know, a Latina woman working and, um, as a multicultural, um, manager, a multicultural fair manager at, at, at the Yankees. So my next question is, um, how do you think the hostels, educa the education that you receive in hostels prepare you for that position that you have right now? Well, first, um, I think, well, the English part, that was the first one. Uh, a lot of people, when I, you know, when I, st I started uh, with the Yankees in 2012, so I had uh, less than four years uh, in the United States learning English uh, with an accent. And, but what my classes, uh, or my, what my professors prepare me to, it's not to be afraid to speak. Because, you know, like usually when you're learning, 
you are afraid to like make mistakes and like people won't understand you. And I, 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 I got that confidence at hostels and also the opportunity of being part of the student government. I have to lead events. I have to lead projects. So I was prepared for that. And all the different activities that I was involved in at hostels helped me to navigate what will become my career with the New York Yankees, where my role is very unique. And that's why I like it so much, because it touches into so many different areas across the organization. And that's what uh, my hostess experience prepare me for, to be ready for all of that. Uh, if, we, if I have to go to the field to record an interview, or if I have to receive a group from the community, or if we have to be in a foundation meeting, or if we have to file reports, or if I have to prepare something for radio, all of those different projects and different areas, those, that was kind of like my experience at hostels. I will be in class, but I will also be attending um, a speech, or I will be with a, a meeting with the faculty, or I will be helping you to prepare for the fashion show or the career service, like, you know, all of, all of that uh, was very helpful uh, from hostels. And, you know, I, I want to really, really highlight the fact that uh, the leadership um, skills that I started at hostels were very helpful. And also my basis of communications today was just like my English and language today was really great like everywhere where I go I highlight the work of that program it was an intensive program and it, it, the names for a reason it was very intense every single day from nine to three but it's the best experience that I could have asked for at the beginning of my academic career thank you Lina and and I know this is um we're talking about how to prepare for the future but you know, I know there's a lot of women in the audience as well. So how do you feel as a Latina woman working in a male-dominated industry, especially a sport and male-dominated industry? It is, it is something that I've talked to for a lot of years now because you don't, like, you know, that's something that we as a society were trying to, to change and then we're making progress. Uh, but we are, we need more progress. And that's one, like, you know, I think that's one of like my goals also, as far as what I can do um, in, in my role, how can I help open doors for other, like not only people in my community, but also for other women. And what I represent and what I do is going to set the tone as to the next person. And I want to make sure that I, not only that I leave my door open, but I am able to open other doors for women because we don't, we are now seeing the changes, but we need to be united uh, in order to make that change possible as well. Is that the same experience uh, for you, Delsa? Because you know, I'm in the sports industry. It's male dominated, but uh, education, you might have a different experience. So, so it's in development, yes, it's kind of similar. Because when I go to conferences and for, you know, case um, conferences that you go to learn about development and fundraising, it's pretty much a very male dominated industry. And the diversity, I mean, I don't see a lot of Hispanic doing the work that I do. So I think, yes, I think we need more diversity in development and fundraising and also um, sport. And, and I think we're doing a great job opening doors for other people, so. And you know, uh, last, yes. last night I, in my class, I had a, we had a guest speaker and she was speaking about um, diversity and inclusion in the workplace. And one of the things that I think is, is important to highlight is that she mentioned is not about putting down one gender to lift up the other one. It's just making sure they're both rising like together at the same level. And, and I think that's very valuable because that's not what we want to do here. Just we want that equality uh, in terms of like gender and opportunities as well. And also I think another, I know another thing, another way that we can help um, other women, um, not only in the industry, but in general, it's to, advocate for them 
and to highlight what they're doing and be proud of what they have accomplished. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm very proud of you, Idelsa, for everything that you have accomplished. Thank you. Proud of you, Lina. And also for all the help that you, you know, you we have we have a family and 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 the Yankees. And I know the the Yankees are being great to us. Um, and and I know you have a play your part there, and we thank you for that. Um, so we are, I want to ask you the last question. I know we talk about this um already but i it, this this is going to be like the closing remarks and you know also has a lot of resources um for the students you know we take the students like family and and i and you and i we can testify on that so my last question is as you know you will always work on behalf of the students uh, um from financial assistance mentorships internships to name a few uh, but the race is really theirs um, to run and complete. So what are some of the best, uh, the last advice that you're gonna um, share today? And maybe the last um, best practice that about the best practice that you implemented in your career that might be helpful for our students. Um, well, the last. <laughs> One of the things that I will say is, like we mentioned before, be active, get involved, and don't wait for things to come to you. Go and look for them. Because things uh, happen to those who really go after what they, you know, what they want in life. That a second, I think it's very important to be prepared for when the opportunity comes. Mm -hmm. And this is, this is actually an advice that um, uh, former president Felix Matos gave me because I had a conversation one-on-one -on -one with him. Uh, and then he told me that, he said, be ready for when the opportunity comes to you. And I took it very seriously and prepare yourself because you don't know when the next opportunity is going to come, but you wanna make sure you're ready for that. Um, third, uh, be determined in what you want and really, really, really uh, put in the work uh, because it's, it's, it's going to pay off at the end. Sometimes we get discouraged. Uh, we have days that things are not going to be as easy as we want them to be. But that doesn't mean that we're not making progress. And obviously, enjoy the journey because that's the you know that's that's the the best part of it. Like enjoying um, the good days, enjoying the bad days, uh, but enjoying everything that you are learning along the way. And and know that there are going to be always resources. There are going to be always people that are going to be cheering for you, and then they are there to also help you. Thank you so much, Lina. I really, I really appreciate you. I, I can do this every day. I really enjoy this conversation. You know, we need to share our story because I, I'm pretty sure we inspired someone today. So thank you so much for this. And um, it does. That do are we taking questions from? Yes. Yeah, so that's what I was gonna go next. So Felix, take it away. And Lina, thank you so much. And I really enjoyed this conversation. Thank you. Likewise, Idelsa. It was great speaking with you, as always. Thanks. Thank you, Lina and Idelsa. A very powerful conversation indeed. We're going to take this opportunity to allow the audience to ask any questions to our panelists. You could do so through the Q&A section at the bottom of your screens. And I'll be more than happy to read those questions to our panelists. Oh, I see Ms. Sandy Figueroa. Sandy, I loved her of my time, a hostess there. Social empowerment. Sandy. Yeah. Thank yeah. you, Sandy. I love you too. <laughs> I do have the first question. Why did you pick to attend hostos? I guess that goes to both of you. I can I can answer first if you want me to. I actually um so. I went to hostels because the real, the real honest answer is because my uncle went there, my aunt went there, another aunt. Like, so it was part of like, the, this is a family thing. And then my family had already been a hostess at the intensive program. And I went there and 
they accepted me. Uh, and after that, I wanted to stay there. And really, I think one of the biggest things about hostels and that makes hostels different from other colleges, I will say, it's that family atmosphere and that you can always find someone there to help you. Um, so for me, um, I was looking for college to, you know, to just to learn English and um, also it was actually very close to my house. I, I live in the South Bronx since I came from the Dominican Republic. And I fell in love with the school and then I decided to stay and, and I said, you know what, I'm gonna finish my, my associate and that's it, I'm gonna stay with an associate. But I, in hostess, I met so many people that inspired me and gave me the opportunity and, and allowed me to believe in my potential, you know? Like the president, one day she called me into her office. She was like, why do you wanna be a nurse and not a doctor? Cause I wanted to be a nurse. So that's another, another, another. So I, I went to learn English and then I wanted to become a nurse. Uh, there was a waiting list for the nursing program. And then, I don't know, she find out that I wanted to be a nurse and she asked me like, why does she wanna be a doctor? Uh, and people like her and so many other people that I met hostess that they made me feel comfortable and they uh, motivated me to continue my education. And that's why I decided to stay in CUNY uh, from the beginning to the end, because I feel like CUNY, um, they understand. Um, so hostels and CUNY in general, but hostels, hostels is like family. The, 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 the holistic approach, how people in hostels, um, they make you feel comfortable. They understand that you have, you know, obstacles. They understand that you have um, first college generation, that you need to deal with, you know, family issues and all that. And we, the support that we receive at hostels, I don't think we can receive it at all institutions. So that's why hostels is the best. And people, when, leave the, when they leave hostels, they come back and they say, yes, hostel was the best. Mm -hmm. I completely I agree with you. This question is uh, for you, Lina. You sound like an inspirational person who worked really hard to get where you're at. What advice would you give to students who feel unsure about their ultimate goals, but do not want to give up? How do they stay motivated? Oh, that's a very good one. Um, what would I tell? Well, first, if, if you don't want to give up, do not give up, period. Because you, I, I always say, when you start something, you already did more and you are further away than when you started. Um, that's, that's one. And how they stay motivated by one, uh, remembering what, where they want to be and what they have done so far and looking at others that have been able to accomplish things. When you look at people that are like, you know, successful or people that you admire and you see their path, they have to work hard through the way. They have to, like they also say, like sometimes you feel that you have to sacrifice, but more than a sacrifice, I think is, is just, part of your learning experience, experience is part of your journey. And I will say continue to do that because it's going to be worth it. And everything that we do is going to take you where you are meant to be. Um, so I will definitely uh, tell you to not to give up, to keep fighting and enjoying what you do every single day and try to learn the experience, even on those days when you think there was, they weren't as good as you wanted them to be. Thank you, Lena. Next question. Uh, could you please share with students the importance of engaging in an internship and treating it as a job, as these opportunities may lead to a career? Could you share tips and advice for students to maximize their internship experience and what steps you took to help advance in your career? Oh, absolutely, Felix. And, and this is a really good and great question. So when I started the internship program, I was told this was just one year internship. So I said to myself, okay, I only have one year to be here 
to learn as much as I can from this organization, who, by the way, it had so many different areas that I didn't know. Just like a, a quick um, anecdote for you guys, when I sent my application for the New York Yankees, I thought I was going to be giving water to the players on the field. Like I didn't know what, what was going on behind the scenes. When I went to the interview, they showed me that they had a marketing department, a publications department, tours, events, community relations, finance. And I was amazed by all the opportunities in different areas that were not necessarily baseball history related. And one of the things that um, the person who interviewed me then told me, he said, you know, you don't need to be a baseball expert to be in sports and that like in that and with the Yankees. And that was true for me. So during my internship program, I knew it was going to be only one year. What I did was I, I will get projects. I will, you know, make sure I did them to the best of my abilities but then I will ask for more. I will always ask my, my supervisor, what else can I do for you? How else can I help you? And even after they will give me all the projects that they too I could handle, I will then research of what we were doing and then come up with ideas to enhance the work that we were already doing in the department. And that's how we created um, a better um, like system for the, for the social media channels. And that's how I created the Instagram account for the New York Yankees, the Snapchat account for the New York Yankees. And that's how I started like developing other relationships because I didn't just stay um, doing what they told me to do, but I also wanted to add value to what they were doing and see how I could contribute um, and be a sponge. Like even as of today, I still try to be a sponge and absorb, absorb as much as I can because we learn every single day. And my current Paul says, if, if you don't learn something in a day, then your day was wasted because you're supposed to learn continuously. And I believe that that's how you do it. So tip number one, Make sure that you ask how you can contribute to make sure that you look for ways in which you can add value to the work that you're doing and just be there. I was always available. I was always open to anything that they needed me to do. I will always say, yes, I will do it. Oh, yes, I want to do that. Oh, I want to know more. And I will do my own research uh, there. And, and that's how uh, after one year, my boss, my internship was, uh, when it was up, they were, okay, Lena, you know what? Uh, now we want you to be part-time. And then, you know what? I graduated. You know what, Lena? We don't want you to go anywhere. And then that's, and I'm today, I'm still there after a day, almost a decade, I'm still there with the New York Yankees. So, um, so I saw the question and um, I started working at a hostess in the career services office. And, um, you know, I, um, one of the things that I, I was a part-time, I was a CUNY cap. So CUNY cap is you work in CUNY and they pay for some of your classes when I was doing my master. And one of the things that I work in as, um, then I, I think also because I was like Lena, you know, I was involved in doing everything. They put me in charge of the closet, which it was the career closet, so where we provide students with uh, um, business attire to go to interview. And I took the closet like it was my closet. I cleaned everything. I was always there folding clothes, um, racing. I created a bazaar to raise money to buy like all the items, like stocking for the students. You know, like I took the project so personal. And, but also when I became and the a full time over there, and I was one of the career counselors, I used to work with the students and telling students always, you know, it was hard sometimes to convince the students to go for an internship. And why? Because they, they had needs and they, they wanted to work. They were like, but well, why would I do an internship? It's free labor. And I was like, no, it's not. First of all, an internship is gonna open doors for you. It's gonna give you the opportunity to prove who you are and what you have to offer 
So my approach was always telling the students this thing, take that opportunity, do your best. And I used to tell people all the time, you know what, internships sometimes lead to a job. And you know, that was not always the case, but sometimes it was the case, but I always tell the students that so they would feel more motivated and do their best. So I wanted to echo what Lena was saying, you know, whatever you do, even if you're not getting paid, it's something that you're gonna put on your resume, it's gonna open doors for you and it might lead in a job opportunity as well. So whatever you can do, just do it and do it well. Completely agree. Thank you, Lina and Idelsa. I also have some uh, very inspiring messages here that I would like to read to both of you. Uh, Lina, you were in my fitness course uh, spring 2011 class. Uh, because of your uh, sport background, I knew you would thrive in a sports area. Very proud of you. That's from Michael Gossett. Um, what else do we have here? From Shiani, I'm so proud of both of you. Idelsa, you are an inspiration to many of us. Thank you for everything you do for our students and community. This is not a question from Janet Jimenez. I love to see a young Colombian woman being successful and in a field dominated by men. Kudos to you. And what else do we have here? Congratulations to our panelists for the great presentation from uh, Ana, Ana Garcia, Dean Garcia. And, and congratulations to Lena Cruz, very powerful live story. So, um, and I just wanted to say, the audience. I'm sorry, one more thing. Um, the, when I was a student at Hostos, I didn't have the opportunity to go to the career services office because I was, I was a student government president. I was um, part of a few clubs. So I was always busy, but the Career Services Office has so many, so, so much to offer. So I know we have some students there in the audience. So please, please don't, before you go, before you graduate, go, go over there, work on your resume, find out if there's any internship opportunities, uh, volunteer opportunities, but get involved. And, and I think that's one of the best places to, to look for any um, assistance and resources as well. Thank you, Delsa. We have many hostels alumni at, the, at our career services department as well, so we're very proud of them as well. So thank you, Lina and Idelsa, for uh, sharing your experiences with us this afternoon. You are indeed two powerful, inspiring hostels alumni. The Hostels Community College family is very, very proud of you. On behalf of the Office of the President and the Office of Alumni Relations, this is Felix Sanchez, Alumni Relations Manager, saying thank you, everyone, for your attendance to our Veladas Ostosianas conversation. Stay healthy and have a blessed evening, everyone. Take care. <laughs>